What's up, you beautiful bastards? Welcome to the Basement Hangout, coming to you from somewhere in American suburbia. My name is Chad, and with me as always is Bob. And Bobby, yo. Basement. <laughs> Tires are very low. Tires are very low. What does that mean? Air is leaking, son. <laughs> what do you mean? In my vehicle, the tires keep leaking air, and I don't know why. I thought that you've had that for a while. Now. I have, but it's been, it's been worse recently. So you're still just refilling them? Yeah, I got a really bomb ass uh, like German air pump. Yeah. So I just spend more money on pump. It's like my fourth pump <laughs> <laughs> instead of new tires. Uh, yeah. Would not be cheaper if you just got new tires. No, I think or? my rims are bent. So is they that like, what it is? They have to like melt them. Yeah. They would melt the rims. Mm -hmm. Is that what happens? Yeah, they got to melt like the. So no matter how new my tire is, they're still going to leak air. Some like two of my tires. Oh shit! Did you get the? Uh, did you get your other car fixed? The one that hit the deer? Uh, it still has the damage. Still getting quotes. Still getting quotes. Why? Yeah. Mm, don't know. <laughs> Just lazy. No, the quotes are like a lot. So I'm trying to get lower. Yeah, ones. but you have. But you have insurance to pay. Yeah, for I know, it. but isn't it just five hundred dollars for you, no matter what? Well, if you keep having claims, your insurance goes up. Oh, so you're trying to avoid a claim? No, no, no. I'm do, I'm going to do a claim, but if the claim can be like two grand cheaper, it doesn't hit you so hard. like I'm going to pay that shit for the next like I don't know how many years, you know? Like in increase in your insurance? Yeah, so I'm leaving like the dent with deer hair in it. <laughs> <laughs> so. So you're just still getting quotes. Yeah, I need to get two more. I got one and it was like seven grand. I need to get two Holy more. Holy shit. Yeah, it's fuckers. And that's just a side panel or is there a mirror gone or what? <sighs> they claim there's more damage than you can see. Oh, on the frame? I don't even, I don't, I, I don't know really. I didn't really look at it. I was like, fuck that. I'm going to go do a different. So you've only gone to one quote in all this <clears> time. <throat> Yeah, and they said it'd be three weeks without a car, which that means rental car with through insurance. I don't think they'll cover three weeks. Yeah, I don't even know. I think my insurance, was, which is Geico, would cover max seven days. So that's another issue. So your wife's driving around with a busted-ass car? So it doesn't look that bad. That's the thing. You just see some deer. If you look closely, you can see some deer hair <laughs> and like a little, like, uh, it's not even a gash. It's like it opened and then closed again, but there's deer hair in it. Okay. So just rocking deer hair. So the, the dent's not really a big problem. It doesn't seem to be, but they seem, they seem to think it is. And the car acts normal otherwise. It does vibrate slight, slightly. Okay. So it's got to have But this uh, is not alignment. the car with the bent rims. So That's it's, your truck. It's, so the rims don't vibrate, but it's like, the, like there's like a dent in where the tire would seal. But that's so in, in your wife's car or your No, car? no, in my truck. So they're balanced, okay. but I pump them up every like three to five days. Okay. If nice. it's cold, if it's hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. If it's hot, it goes like months. Up and down. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, interesting. Because rubber expands and contracts, you know. Yeah, yeah. I flew back from uh, San Antonio last night and I was uh, actually, we had a connection through um, Houston. And so from Houston to our airport here locally, uh, I get on the plane. I'm like, damn, this is a nice plane. We flew United. And um, I'm like, what, what model is this? It looks all new and modern and somewhat spacious. 737 Max? 737 fucking <laughs> Max. I thought they decommissioned that. That's uh, So I didn't even... I'm like, what what model of plane is this, right? So I'm like, let me look at the 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 card that yeah, has the like the emergency info on it because it always has the model near the throw it bag. Yeah, so I pull <laughs> it out, I look at it, and it's seven thirty seven max eight slash nine, and I'm like, what the fuck? I'm on a seven thirty seven <laughs> max. Yeah, you might nose dive, dude. Uh, dude, I I started thinking about like. My family and... I think they just fired the do guy. Do I have enough life insurance for them to survive? <laughs> Did I leave like shit in my drawer that I don't want anyone finding? You know what you I mean? You should have sent me a text like, this is where everything I need <laughs> taken out is. <laughs> I was all worried, dude. I was like, holy shit. So we're taxiing and I'm, I have my iPhone up and I'm Googling 737 Max. Like, what's the latest? I didn't even know 
that just in the last couple of months. Yeah, they fired the guy who was ahead of that. An Alaska Airlines flight uh, took off and was climbing at like 14,000 feet. The door fucking blew off. I saw that. And it had to make an emergency <laughs> landing. And this is two years after, or three years after the last couple, like two really down, major yeah. issues. So I'm reading more, I'm reading more, and I'm like about to go to my death. I can't believe they're still flying this shit. And I, I know I had sort of vaguely remembered what happened in the past, but I didn't know all the details. So as we're taxiing, I'm reading the fucking... Do you know everything that happened? I watched the documentaries, yeah. Like, well, the pilots didn't know how to fly it. Dude, it is so messed up, man. So they, what they did was, and you may already know this, but what they did was because they wanted the 737 MAX to be able to fly into and out of smaller airports, so they, they moved the wings forward and lowered the engines, which somehow lets it take off at a steeper angle with less runway. But what happens is because of that new configuration, the nose, while it's flying, could have a tendency under certain conditions to point up. And if it points up too much, the plane will stall. So Boeing installed that MCAS Yeah, that's the problem. System. Are they, well, but they didn't want the pilots to have to train. Well, yeah. So the MCAS system would detect that the nose is pointing up and automatically point it down. And it was relying on a single sensor that was detecting the nose pointing up, but the sensor was faulty in those two, two planes that yeah, crashed. Yeah, so nose dive. So the plane was flying normally. The sensor went faulty, thought the n- nose was pointing up. So it automatically points the nose down, which turned the plane into a nose dive. Mm-hmm. And the pilots had no training and didn't know what the fuck was going on. So they're pulling on the thing, trying to get the plane up. It's fighting against them, pushing the nose back down. And they lost... And it fucking nosedived into the ground. Mm-hmm. Two of them. So then I'm, I'm reading something like almost 500 people total died in those two crashes. Dude. We call them souls in the airline industry, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I continue reading and I see that Boeing didn't train anybody. Well, on- the airlines didn't want a new plane if, if it yes. required pilot like extensive training. So they... Hit it in the instruction manual. Right. So what happened was exactly what you're saying. Because it was a 737 model that was basically repurposed, they could deploy it without doing the extensive training on a brand new model, save Mm -hmm. money. And they didn't train the pilots properly on this MCAS system. A lot of them didn't even know it existed. Right. So when it happened, they had no idea what to do or what was going on. I mean, it's so messed up, dude. So did your cellular signal go out and you like wigged out or did you connect the Wi-Fi and pay? No, like so we were taxiing for a while. So I read all the stuff right before <laughs> we took off. Out. And then we took off and I'm like, oh shit, um, I might die on this flight. But you know, it's so fucked up what they did, man. So yeah, I, this, I saw this today in the news. Boeing company fired the head of its 737 MAX aircraft program today. So. <laughs> Unbelievable, man! I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, damn. Down in the Glad basement, you made it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure, man. Yeah, that's. So, did you tell the people sitting with you, like, I was sitting, hey, dude, I was sitting next to my coworker, and I did. I was like, well, I said to him, damn, this is a nice, this is a nice plane. What's going on? I, like, the plane out there was a piece of junk, like yeah, the regular seven thirty seven, old, like small ass seats, no technology. This thing was all lit up blue, like this studio. And it was like all beautiful. Like, damn, what is this? He's like, yeah, I don't know. And I pulled the card out and I'm like, Your heart it's dropped. a 737 <laughs> Max. He's like, holy shit, are you serious? Damn. Uh, he literally sent a note to our other coworkers uh, who were at this meeting with us in San Antonio and said, well, but you guys are going to have to write the meeting notes because we, we're not going to make <laughs> oh, it. Oh, damn. <laughs> Because, yeah, I know they decommissioned him. And I didn't, today I just saw that they fired that guy and I'd never heard of him since. So they grounded, back when, that, when the planes crashed, they grounded them for like six months or something until they could do the training, fix the issue, do the training and all that kind of stuff. Then they let them go again. 
And then this thing happened recently where a door blew off. Yeah, so that's not because of the MCAS. And I'm no, that wasn't the MCAS. I'm the reading door. the laundry list of issues that that fucking 737 Max has had. And it is unbelievable. It's shit like the wiring harnesses for the hydraulics were moved too close together. They're supposed to be redundant. If one fails for some reason, like um, a fault, it's quite possible that fault will affect the other harness, which is supposed to be the redundant one. They'll both go out, and then you'll have no hydraulics. The bolts on the door weren't tightened enough and weren't the right spec, so the door blew off at 14,000 feet or whatever. And the list goes on and on and on and on. And I'm sitting there going, why is this thing in the air? But you're like, dang, this is nice. <laughs> I know, right? Look at the blue light. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> There's a screen in front of my face. <laughs> but, I was, you know, the only thing I can think to make me feel better is the pilots must know all this shit. Yeah. And they're, and they're okay flying it. Right. And you made it, so. It was a very smooth ride. Uh, comfortable. So you're pro 737 Max. I'm eight, not. Eight slash nine. I am not. As a matter of fact, next time I book any flights, I'm avoiding any 737. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Because of your panic attack on board? No, because of the history, which is fucking piss poor. The fact that, you know, let's be honest, the airlines, they invested billions of dollars in those planes. Yeah. They're not going to just dump it. And Boeing's not going to give them their money back. So from the documentary, what they, they showed Boeing workers, like the, the culture used to be you call out something, they fix it. And now if you call out something, you get fired. Yeah. I'm telling you, next time I'm booking flights, I'm not taking a 737 Max. I so, don't give a fuck. So the issue may be in everything Boeing produces now is my point. Well, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about the quality of construction and what it used to be. And, you know, we talk about shit like our appliances and stuff, and we always say offhand, oh, they don't make it like they used to. But maybe that's going into everything. Makes so the, Air Bel the Airbus, which is a French company, doesn't have these kinds of issues as far as we know. I'm, I'm done with 737 Max, dude, <laughs> for real. Yeah, I believe you. I ain't, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm changing my flight. So back, back when um, – the crashes happened and they grounded them for like six or nine months and then they let them fly again. Um, they were actually allowing people who realized it was a 737 Max and had booked their flight, they were allowing them to change it to cancel their flight and get a flight credit so that they could change to a different model. Mm. And what's really fucked up is that the FAA, which was has always been the gold standard, so every other country around the world, if the FAA green lighted a model. All the other countries, Said FAA yes. equivalents did too, just like blanket, boom, we accept it. After that happened, they stopped doing that. They now do their own inspections regardless of the FAA because the FAA- Fucked up. Fucked up. And we're like, yeah, you want to use a 737? We've already okayed that. Okay, go ahead. They didn't do the full-on inspection as if this was a new model, which it basically was. And both his crashes were not US. Correct. Yeah. They were Asian airlines. I don't remember which country, countries, but yeah, dude, I was not happy. <laughs> yeah. Thank God you made it. Damn. Yeah. Thank God. And I know there's probably hundreds of those flights now, but I mean, it just takes the one. Yeah. Like, they oh. say it's like one in, uh, I think 111 million or something chance you'll crash. Yeah, but that was before the 737 Max. <laughs> now the, the odds are slightly higher, I think. I don't even know. If you're in one of those planes. <laughs> Shit. I don't like it. Well, yeah, like you said, the pilots are, know the issues and they're risking their life. Somewhere. I would assume so, but what do I know? Mm -hmm. What if they still haven't been trained? They're like, Shit, this is 737 Max. This might nose die. <laughs> What do we do? I don't know. Just pray. Like drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I'm not. Uh, I'm definitely not taking my family on a flight on a 737 Max until somebody tells me all the issues are 100 percent resolved. Like the FAA. <laughs> <laughs> or you need another country to bless. I like think it. I need fucking Aeroflot from Russia to tell me. <laughs> That this shit is acceptable. I don't know, man. Yeah, that's scary. So that was my night last night. 
Yeah, well, thank God you made it and you had a screen in front of your face. Well, I was watching uh, movies on my computer the whole time. So you don't use the movies on the screen? No. They're free now, I think. But, you know, I, I use Bluetooth for my, like, uh, noise-canceling headphones, and that doesn't work with the screen. Mm. So I, I usually have my iPad, but I forgot my iPad on this trip, so I was using my computer. You can't plug up with a wire? You can, but I don't have one because I just use the Bluetooth. So even though the screens are beautiful, you don't use They're them? They're not beautiful. You They're, said they were beautiful. It was all lit up. and No, no, no. The plane itself was Oh, had beautiful. the blue lights. Yeah, they're calming when you're nosediving. Yeah, they eventually turn the blue lights off, which I even like better. I like it to be super dark and just if it's look at my play, screen. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what movie did you watch? Uh, it was this new movie with Nicolas Cage. It was all fucked up, man. Um, I don't even remember what it was called. But he's like this loser professor. And all of a sudden, everybody starts dreaming about him. But like... Sexually or... Well, it's all over the place. And so, like, the first thing happens, his daughter, his teenage daughter comes to him, and then I had this dream where, like, things are falling from the sky, and you're just standing there doing nothing. And I'm like, Dad, what are you doing? Like, help. And he's like, everything's fine, and just keeps going about his business. And he's like, oh, that's a weird dream. And then, like, one of his students comes, and she's like, I have had this weird dream. You're in it every night. There's, like, an earthquake happening. And everything's going bonkers and you just walk through the scene and look at me like nothing's happening and then walk away. Mm. And over time, all these people are coming to him. Like everyone in society is having these dreams and it's all, it has him in it every time. Always okay. walking around nonchalantly. That's was it, what, was that's it the good, premise of the movie. Was it a good movie or not? No, it sucks. He's just trying to pay for his, his new wife. And I shit. mean, it was okay, but it's one of those movies where you're not quite sure what you just watched or what the purpose was. Mm-hmm. Uh, eventually it got morbid because the, he became a celebrity because everybody was dreaming about him and he got popular, which made him feel good because he was kind of a loser before that. But eventually it got morbid because the dreams changed and it, it turned into him like killing people in like, the dream. Yeah. Like the people who had the dreams, he would come with a hammer and like bash their head in one woman. He raped her. Like all kinds of morbid ass shit in their dreams. So now everybody hates him and he's ostracized from society. It was like a Twilight Zone episode. But there's no like end reason why? I fell asleep. Okay. <laughs> so take that for what it means. Yeah. <laughs> so do not watch it. I wouldn't, I, I, I can't recommend it, honestly, because I'm not quite sure what the point was. I think it was supposed to be like a, uh, commentary on our social media viral, you know, thing that we have going on in our society and, and how it can turn and like how you can be a celebrity at any moment and then be hated at any moment. But who gives a fuck? Yeah. You know he, what I mean? He, like he does. He did. I mean, whoever wrote it cares, but I don't, I don't care about any celebrity. I mean, I think he's just signing up to get checks because he used to be way bigger. But this was more of a, um, like, he, he's done some shitty-ass movies, like um, Ghost action Rider. movies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was bad. Stupid-ass shit like yeah. that. He's done many like that. This was, I would say, more legit, but that doesn't mean it was good. It was so, okay. Are you going to watch the ending or not? No. Nah. So you're done with it? I'm done, yeah. Like, you've tied him with 737 Max. <laughs> you're done with Nicolas Cage. Yeah, now every time I see Nicolas Cage, I'm, I'm going to, like, have a fit. Yeah. 737 Max. <laughs> Although he is in one of my favorite movies of all time, Raising Which, Arizona. I like the one where he sold uh, weapons. Yeah, that was a pretty decent movie. That was my first Blu-ray disc. But Raising Arizona is one of the best movies of all time. Of course, he was like 20-something years old in that movie. but That's you know, where they had like, a, the like kid. a kid named Arizona, a little girl. Yeah, yeah, where they stole, they stole her. Mm -hmm. uh, Coen Brothers, my favorite. Coen Brothers is my absolute favorite. Uh, movie directors, writers, producers, etc. They have all the good shit. As you know, they're the ones who made um, The Big Lebowski, which is my favorite movie of all time. Yeah, that is your favorite movie of all time. Yeah. Hence the tattoos. <laughs> Hence the picture over the bar in the basement. Yeah, that is. The dude. Of the dude drinking his uh, white, white Russian. Yeah, white Russian. So anyway, what else is going on? We have uh, Kaz Clark coming on in 19 minutes. To give us an update on the Pentarch, Pentrich, Penturk, 
incident. Penturk, yes, you did it correct. Yeah, um, that's going to be quite interesting. Looking forward to that. And it's midnight her time. Maybe she's been drinking. She's starting at midnight. I don't think she drinks. Because of the aliens? <laughs> I just think she doesn't drink. Because she told you that or you just think that? She always seems very level-headed and calm, you know. Because she's drinking. She ain't. She doesn't show up and be like, Fuck ye! <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think, I think that's just her demeanor. But do you remember that one time we had a comedian on and we were pretty sure that comedian was like on drugs and they didn't yes. want to come on that was one of our early episodes <laughs> no we had to like call them like hey you coming <laughs> yeah, on like yeah. and she was like he she can't remember which it was she i didn't want to say that but <laughs> she was like in the kitchen like in the fetal position on camera like <laughs> yeah, I rocking <laughs> i think you're exaggerating now <laughs> no remember there was a homeless encampment outside of her apartment yeah and it made her super nervous when she was on drugs yeah it turned out to be a Fairly decent interview. I mean, so did they make it? Are they big now? No idea. Never followed up. That was the early days, dude. I think that was like episode 15 or something. I just remember that was the first guest too. Like sometimes guests don't show up and we actually called that guest and they ended up coming on anyway. Yeah. And maybe they shouldn't have, you know. You realize we're on episode uh, 177. What are we going to do for episode 187? Like a murder. 187? Murder porn. <laughs> we could documentary yeah we could yeah it's hard to believe that we're on episode 177 dude yeah damn do we still have the recording from our very first episode i'm sure you do because you sent it to me where we uh, just recorded on an iphone in my garage all drunk that I, could be a bonus episode for our, our, our yeah that'd be uh, good our members I remember I had forgotten that you said you're putting your phone on top of the fridge when we we're all drunk in your garage. And then the next day you sent it to me. I'm like, what the fuck? You recorded our whole conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucked up, dude. I think we were super drunk. Yes. Just yes. talking all kinds of nonsense. Well, that's, that's how the podcast started. That's how the podcast started. <laughs> I think the, the VIP members would appreciate that. I'll, I'll try to dig that up and put it out. Well, do you remember in the beginning you had to bleep like or cut? Yeah, yeah. Three out of three hours, like two hours. Yeah. <laughs> but just F word, F word, F word, F word, F word. Yeah. We've we've lightened up on that, so now we can just do You motherfucker. Got mass mother motherfucker. You motherfucker. <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. You idiot. I'll whoop you away. Piece of right. uh, <laughs> Damn, it's an overload of emotions. <laughs> all anger. <laughs> I think it was COVID. You know, COVID had us all confused and scared. It was during COVID that we started, yeah. Like at any given moment, we could have killed each other with COVID. <laughs> yeah, just down there like breathing on each other. <laughs> yeah, because we didn't know if it was from surface area or, yeah. you know, urine, <laughs> fucking pellets in the air, you're breathing. Yeah, that's true. I remember that. No one knew what the fuck. Like people were getting shit in the mail, wiping it off. I remember we had... um we had a small party here during COVID, and you remember Dante and his wife were here. Mm -hmm. And I got a phone call from my coworker, who supposedly yeah, is plugged in. Yeah, that was <laughs> fucked up, dude. And he was like, "I just got word. It's going down. We're on lockdown. Any moment now, nothing's going to be available. I recommend you go to the store and buy as much shit as you can." <laughs> yeah. And we were all drunk, so all three families like ran out to the grocery store and like. <laughs> Hoarded a bunch of food. <laughs> no, the yeah, the party immediately ended, and we were all at the same grocery store, like running yeah. down the aisles. Like, <laughs> I need ten loaves of bread. Like Doritos, honey. <laughs> cool Ranch Doritos. <laughs> and then nothing happened. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. I actually was mentioning that to someone last weekend. <laughs> Is that right? Because I, I don't know what what made me think of it, but. <laughs> I can remember going back to that guy being like, dude, where do you get your information from? He's like, I was just fucking with you. Yeah. I have an inside source. They changed their mind at the last moment. <laughs> yeah. But you were safe just in case. <laughs> yeah. We had to throw a lot of shit away. Dude. <laughs> when I told the story, the guy was like, oh, they were probably fucking with you. And I was like, yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> no, he definitely wasn't. Because he sent it to a bunch of us at work. And like I said, he supposedly plugged into the community, so. So if he called you like this weekend, would you listen to him or be like, 
I know. I don't think I would anymore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the boy who cried wolf. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would be the one real one. Yeah. Like, shit, we're out of everything. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was uh, interesting times, man. So how do you feel about the, the shot now that you've had it? Uh, I wish I didn't get we're it. We're beyond. I, I wish you didn't get it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the same way. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 don't I know just got leave. my seventh booster, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm all in, but I wish I wouldn't. I actually saw this conspiracy on Reddit the other day where they were saying that um, it's the fourth booster that activates some thing. 5G. <laughs> that you are now like 100% under the control of the cabal. No, but I saw some dude who works in a morgue and he supposedly pulls these like oh yeah i saw that like white fibrous yeah, yeah like fibrous shit that makes people die yeah yeah i saw the that fuck is that but i mean how does he know that that's from the covid shot it i could don't be fucking anything. know dude who knows that's the thing you can't believe what you see man true but i was still like i've never like what the fuck yeah that was messed up like, I immediately had a pain in my left leg. Like, ah! <laughs> fibrous! <laughs> fibrous tissue yeah. in my leg. In my vein. <laughs> Freaking trash. That's a classic. I haven't heard that in a while. Oh, that was... Figure a, it out! I wonder dude. what that, that guy's up to these days. He died of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> he, he ran for Congress. He didn't get the jab. He ran for Congress in Virginia. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. That crazy. Figure it out! Freaking trash! Freaking boy! <laughs> talking to teachers right that yeah he went to a uh school um i guess council or whatever meeting and he was all upset that they had the kids going to school with masks on what's funny is i'm looking at the picture he was yelling and he had his mask on probably because he was required yeah yeah so but then he ran for congress and lost well at least he took it through you know he believed yeah true he and wasn't just going nuts at a pta meeting he may have been right Right. And then you remember the dude who was all upset about what we called things? We can call them saucy nugs or trash. Yes. What was he saying that we should call things? I think he was just, his point was it's all bullshit. You can call them whatever the hell you want. Call what whatever you want? I can't remember. He was like just making a joke out of things. Uh, was it chicken fingers? Like why do we call them chicken fingers when they're not fingers? He said we can call them saucy nugs. Or trash. We can call them saucy <laughs> nugs or trash. I don't remember, but. That was a funny-ass video. Well, shit, while we're going down memory lane, you remember this? <laughs> so, so I just took a toe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like YouTube fucking something 2-3. The water bringer, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder know, what he's up to. I know it's the water, but his original screen name was like something YouTube yeah, yeah. fucking. Chip butter 2 Chip butter 3, <laughs> yeah. Chip butter 2-3. He was Chip Butter Tooth 2, 3, <laughs> Waterbringer, uh, YouTube, <laughs> YouTube Chip Butter Two Three. I don't know. Who knows what he is now? <laughs> yeah. I, who, I mean, shit, is he even alive? Come Dumpster 5. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm sure he's alive. Yeah? Oh, yeah. He's a survivor. We need to check up on him. Maybe he'll come back on. He's probably like a millionaire now. Do you think it'd be a classic episode to get him back on? If you, how would you find him? He used to be on Instagram. Remember he had those chicks come on too? Yes. And yes, then I they, do. <laughs> and then they messaged us like, you can't air this. Yeah, they were all like lawsuitish. <laughs> so we had to like edit everything they said out of the episode? Yeah. Well, because I think they had real jobs and he was like a... like. A, and then there was that one <laughs> woman that he was with who said that she was a Nephilim? Yes. <laughs> I remember. She had spiked uh, spiked, Dracula teeth. Yeah, Dracula teeth. She said it's because I'm a Nephilim. She was a goddamn Nephilim, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> We've had some interesting characters on this show, that's for sure. Do you remember this? I need to piss. Do you remember this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Asian massage parlor music. If you really need to, if you think you need to pee, but it's just not coming out, this is what you listen to. In fact, I think I need to piss right now. But you would play this when I had to pee, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, hold on a few more minutes. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, you did piss one time your pants during COVID, remember? That's, uh, that's when you started wearing the diaper? Trying to remember. It was a, You started wearing Depends. I thought you were the one who wore the diaper. 
I always joke to try to make you feel better, but <laughs> <laughs> we should get Dante back on. Actually, I agree. It's been a long time. My shit's been turned. The ghost of Dante. Yeah, we haven't seen him in a while. He finally paid out the, the NFL Smoke pool meets every day. Uh, I was like waiting. Like he said, he was going to pay out the NFL pool last week, and I was waiting to gamble my money away. And it was Sunday night at like at, maybe at Sunday in the afternoon. I'm like, dude, are you ever going to fucking pay out the goddamn pool? And he he's like. Did you receive monies? And I finally got the money. So I got money. I didn't know I won anything. Yeah, you won. You, well, what's fucked up? You won, and that, but you quit playing for the last like yeah eight weeks. Right. No, <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know I won anything. Yeah, you did good, dude. You you tied like five five out of five. I think two weeks at least. And you. Hit. I think I only got thirty five bucks, but hey, I'll take it. It's yeah. Like extra money. You know, it's like. Almost two orders of wings with extra ranch, all flat. Thank you, Dante. Smoke meats every day. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot! I was at, what the fuck was I? I was somewhere and got wings. Oh, <clears throat> that place near the uh, ice rink on Valentine's. <laughs> like, didn't order all flats like an idiot and then got fucking 11 out of 12 drums. Oh, Jesus. What did you do? Just eat I it? was all like upset, a little bitch. and my wife was like, "Say something." Then I was like, "I can't." You never say anything. You just eat it like a little bitch. Yeah, I was. Dude. Super, it, yeah, it was. You I was bitch. super upset. Why didn't you say something? I, what I was doing was looking around like, "Who's the asshole who were all <laughs> flats who had to cancel my shit?" I mean, you just got to stand up for your rights. So yeah, yeah but if you do, you got to do it in the beginning. So I was all about it way back. I think you could have said. You could have just said, "Hey." I got 12 wings and 11 of them are, are drums. I would like a mix. Could you please just bring me like six flats or so, five flats? So, but you know how there are drum lovers and flat lovers. Yeah. So I'm thinking, I pictured the Hispanic chef in the back. I'm going to hook this dude up as Valentine's. I'm going to give him fucking mad drums because that's his favorite. Yeah, but you could have easily said to the waitress, can you just bring me five flats? She probably would have done it. It was a man, but. <laughs> I mean, he was also a waitress. He was flustered. He seemed new. I was like, I didn't want to. <laughs> You're too nice, man. It was also, they have happy hour. Apparently it was for this place. It's almost $2 a wing. It's like eighteen ninety nine for a pound. It was $10. So I also was like. Mm. Yeah, but you didn't enjoy it. Yeah, I ate them. I enjoyed that first flat. The first flat was right on top. I'm like, oh God, this is so money. And I, then I looked down when my bone was sitting there with all the drums. Like, and I complained to my wife on valentine so i was you know i didn't want <laughs> i didn't want to kill the it is funny that you went to the wing place on valentine's <laughs> yes this is my favorite <laughs> obviously valentine's was for you she's like where do you want to go i'm not that hungry like i know where i want to go <laughs> the wing place that's funny but i haven't so the only time i've had that issue is when i'm with you and you do all flats and i don't say anything right and i've literally got all drums and that i can accept because I know you're going to enjoy your flats. No, you need to ask for all flats, too. I know, but I feel like... So I didn't realize... Why that, do you feel like anything? Cause just I, ask. I didn't know it screws someone else until I experienced it, and then I didn't want to do that to, like, the fucking... This you know. is a dog-eat-dog dog, dog, eat dog <laughs> world, motherfucker. Ask for what you want. Yeah, I need to start doing that. My mom always told me that. I don't yeah. know what I was thinking. If you don't ask, you don't receive. So I do enjoy... So I'm going to be, like, all flats, but give me two drums. Because I like a drum to get... That's too specific, bitch. <laughs> I like to have a drum That's get, even more difficult. I know. That's the issue. But I like to have at least one or two to get the blue cheese in the bottom of All you got to do is say, can I have flats only? And they'll go, yes. Or they'll say, oh, it's a $2 upcharge. Okay, I'll pay yeah, the which we always dollars. do anyway, yeah. That's worth it. I don't know why I always feel bad about that. I, yeah, why do you? I picture a chicken. <laughs> they only have two, <laughs> two flats. And then I picture them throwing the rest of the whole chicken away. Like, yeah, this is trash. Hey, I got to piss. We got Kaz Clark coming in five minutes. Do you have very quick words of wisdom? What are yours? Do you have any real words? My words of wisdom are, if you book a flight and it's a 737 <laughs> Max, cancel that shit. And is it free now or not? No. In fact, <laughs> let me, rev let me uh, you know, change my words of wisdom. As you're booking... Make sure you look at the model airplane that it is. And if it's a 737 Max, do not cho choose that flight. So I will say in the same general, get the fucking flight insurance. So I, I just had a flight to Minnesota and my son got sick. I had to eat all that shit mm. for my son and the adult ticket. 
Damn. For two or for the whole family? No, no, only two were going. Okay. I was going to be here like the whole weekend. And then that didn't happen. <laughs> I was waiting to text you like, yeah, I'll be in the basement if you're available. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have been like, leave the like door a, unlocked. Like a, like a lot. <laughs> Wings are being delivered. All right. Words of wisdom. Ow. Basement. All right.